This might be the coolest looking armor set and weapon combination that Link has ever had. We almost look like the Grim Reaper. And many of you have been wondering, how did I get the scythe and how did I get the armor? Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's exactly what we're going to be going over today. During this, we're also going to be able to get the Dark Link set, as well as the Tunic of Memories, which is your starting shirt from Breath of the Wild. So if you want to look awesome like this, stay tuned because I'm going to be showing you everything you need to know how to get this armor, unlock all the Poe statues, and get the scythe as well. Well, and maybe even this shield that goes with it too. The first thing you're going to want to do is head to Lookout Landing to the main building and talk to Robbie and Joshua to pick up the first quest line for the Depths. They're going to tell you they're doing an investigation down there and they need your help. Robbie's going to end up leaving and going down into the Depths and you have to find him. To do this, you're going to go from Lookout Landing and you're going to head south to this chasm that's right here. Drop down into this chasm. And there's going to be a light route that you can pick up just below where you drop. You'll end up landing right here, and then just south is the light route that you're going to want to touch. And then you're going to start making your way west. If you make your way kind of directly west, avoiding all of the gloom in between, there's going to be another light route right here, and this is the one that we need to get to to find Robbie. He's going to unlock the camera for you and ask to take a picture of the statue nearby. Once you take a photo of this, head back up to Lookout Landing and talk to Joshua. Now for the fun part. We can finally talk to these Poe statues. Talk to the one right next to Joshua, and the first time you talk to it, it's going to want a Poe. Go ahead and give it one of these, and it's going to unlock a menu for you to be able to start buying things. Initially, you're not going to have a lot, but you will be able to buy a piece of the Dark Tunic set if you're interested in that. Now we need to head into the depths and find more Poe statues. Every Poe statue that we find and talk to is going to increase their power and the amount of things that they're willing to offer you in exchange for Poe's. If you talk to the Poe statue in Lookout Landing, he can actually offer you the location of another Brethren, but it's going to cost you 100 Poe's, so don't do that. That's why we've got this video. You can find them without actually having to pay the Poe statue, and you can unlock all of them and save, I think, like seven or 800 Poe's. For this first bargaining statue, we're going to head back down to the depths, to that light route that we unlocked at the beginning of the video. If you already have this light route unlocked that's southeast from there, you can go straight here. And then what we're going to do is on the map, you can see this little like plateau right here. This is actually where the next bargaining statue is. From the light route, you can see it on the distance right there. Just run up to this guy and talk to him, and he's going to tell you that he's going to level up. At this point, you're going to unlock the first piece of this, which is the Tunic of the Depths, which is 150 pose. You'll also unlock the ability to buy back any of the amiibo items and weapons weapons that you may have gotten already. So this is a pretty nice way to be able to get some good weapons back after they break. Once you unlock this light route, we're going to build a Zonai device. It's going to make this a lot easier. If you have auto build, I highly recommend saving this if you haven't already. This is a really cheap build with just two fans and a steering wheel. It only costs nine Zonite to be able to build. You're gonna need a little bit of extra energy, so if you have any charges, just keep those ready or use one of the large charges. We need to fly up towards these ruins, but then we need to keep going even higher. We're gonna kind of make our way around this little structure right here. And you can kind of see where we need to start going up this little arm. It's actually like a giant statue that's here. And we're aiming for this spot right here. Talk to this guy, he's gonna level up, and I believe you're gonna unlock a new part of the dark set. Once you unlock this light bloom, we're gonna use the same Zonite machine that we were using before, but we're gonna attach a giant bright bloom seed to it. If you don't have a giant one, you can use a small one, it doesn't really matter. The bigger one is just gonna give you more of a light radius, which can come in really handy. And quite frankly, this is probably one of the best tips that I can give for actually exploring the depths. You can attach it to your machine and then you can hit it with an arrow to actually make it grow and give you light. Make sure to hit the machine again though so it doesn't go flying away on you. And now you've got this great energy efficient flying machine with a light on it that doesn't use up any energy. It's pretty amazing. And from this light route, we're gonna head directly east. We're going to head towards this wellspring of wisdom, but you can see it's pretty far down there. So just keep pushing forward on this. That way you can make it down. What I did was I actually jumped off of this, equipped my bow, and then shot a giant bright bloom seed over to this area. And it helped kind of illuminate the statue a little bit. So that way we could get to it. Let's get to the other side of the statue right here and upgrade your post statues once again. Next, we're going to head northeast to the Akala Mountain Skyview Tower. And we're going to drop down this chasm right here. Once down on the chasm, there's going to be another light route just next to it. To get the light route, you're going to head a little bit northwest. You're going to head towards this big mountain that you should have illuminated from the light route, and we're aiming for just on the other side of this waterfall. As you cross the waterfall, you should have no problem seeing the new Bargainer statue. I keep calling them different things. They are called Bargainer statues. Next, you're going to head north of Central Hyrule to the Typhlo Ruin Skyview Tower, and we're going to jump down in this chasm. But 
I'm going to actually guide you through this one because there's something particularly deadly through this chasm. And we're going to try and just glide our way to where we need to go. You should be able to get to this chasm without using much of your glider. So try and conserve your stamina as much as possible. I activated mine for just a second and I'm already too far anyways. So you probably don't need to activate your glider at all to get to this chasm. And I really do recommend trying to save as much stamina as you can or come with an extra stamina food just in case. Now, once we get down towards the bottom of this right about here we're going to activate our glider and we want to point ourselves in a kind of southwest direction you're going to see three lights from a tower up ahead that means you need to turn just a little bit more and you should be able to see just the very tip of the light route that we're trying to get to there's actually something really deadly below us you can see that's an obsidian uh frocks down there we're trying to avoid fighting that and we want to just glide to this light route. If you don't have enough stamina, once you're away from the frocks, you should be able to just land on the ground and then run to the light route. Once you get this light route, this one is going to actually be a bit of a pain to get to. What we need to do is head in a westerly direction. And we're going to try and follow this line right here. So we're going to go a little bit south. And then we're going to follow this line all the way to the bargainer statue. Now, the interesting thing about the way the depths work is it is a complete inversion of the map above. So anything that's a mountain on the map above is going to be a big valley and anything that's a valley is going to be a big mountain in the depths now this one is actually in a big valley which means in the depths it's going to be on top of a giant mountain so what we need to do is use this lovely zonai device and we're going to do this the first time just kind of at least showing you the topography that's down here you don't want to go all the way down you're going to need some extra battery power for this as well we just want to make sure that we're going in the right direction so we kind of want to line ourselves up and this should do it right about here. And as you start running out of energy, just keep in mind to refresh that every so often or take a break if you need to. Another great thing to be having with you is these large Zonai charges. They completely refresh your battery power. You're gonna kinda wanna just keep following this mountain up and you're gonna start seeing on the horizon where we need to go. If you keep looking up, you're gonna see what is a giant freaking statue on, I guess, what you would call the horizon, I suppose. And that's exactly where we need to go. Now, make sure not to tilt your vehicle too much, because if you tilt it too much, you're going to end up falling off. And you're going to have a really, really bad day. There is a light route up here that you can get before trying to get to the top of the statue, if you so desire. It's actually kind of crazy how high up this is in the depths. It's at the very top of the depths. Now last, but certainly not least, we need to head to the great abandoned central mine. You can get here from going south from central Hyrule and then dropping down the chasm right here. Once down the chasm, you're gonna make your way kind of down this way. This is actually one of the first quests that you'll do. You just kind of gotta make your way south, collect all these light routes along the way, and you really can't miss this great abandoned central mine because it's super lit up down in the depths. If you haven't been here before, this is actually where you unlock auto build. So two birds, one stone, am I right? Once you complete everything in this area, or if you already have it unlocked, you're gonna jump down the edge of this. And there's actually a cave that we can go into just behind this funky looking statue with the lady on top. If you go inside of this cave you're gonna see another one of those tall statues just run up and talk to this dude and he's gonna say he's missing four eyes we have to collect all of these things it's a big pain in the butt. The first thing you need to do is head to the Hyrule Field Skyview Tower. You're going to launch yourself out of this and you're going to make your way towards the Great Plateau. We're actually going to aim for this gate right here, just next to the Great Plateau North Chasm. Dive down as close to this as possible. And as you're diving down close to the ground, you're going to see some rocks in the way. While falling, pull out your bow to activate bullet time. And then if you have a bomb arrow, go ahead and shoot this at it. Otherwise, you're probably going to have to slap it with like a rock hammer or something. Water's gonna come rushing out of the gate, revealing what looks to be another piece of a bargainer statue. This is gonna tell you to go to the Temple of Time and talk to the goddess statue that's there. Head up to the goddess statue where you're gonna have a nice conversation and be informed that you're gonna have to go to four different corners of the Great Plateau to collect four eyes that you then need to bring all the way down to the bargainer statue. The first one we're gonna go for is the Eastern Abbey. And just to the side of this Great Plateau East Chasm is going to be a rock wall that you need to blow up or smack apart. So if you blow up that giant rock wall, there's an eyeball inside of here. And then we need to yeet that into the chasm. Now for the unbelievably fun part, jump down into the chasm, land down at the bottom, pick up your eye and run it all the way back to the bargainer statue. Just open up your map, head back over to the same location and then squirt this thing back into its face. Thankfully the eye at the chasm right here is actually a lot easier to see. 
when you're flying from the sky, you can actually see it sitting, but still easy enough. We can just grab that with our hands into the chasm. You're gonna do the same thing for this one. You can pick it up or make a machine, but just run it all the way back to the statue and slam it back into its face. The next one we're going for is going to be the bottom left one at the Great Plateau West Chasm. I'm pretty sure it's in this ice block right next to the chasm. So if you put a flame shield on by equipping one of the flame Zonai things, we can just snag that bad boy up, toss it in yonder hole, and then run all the way back once again to our lovely Poe statue. This is by far the worst Poe statue you can get but it is the last one, so I guess it's understandable. Finally, the last eye. If you head to the southeast chasm, there's gonna be this rock here, and if you lift that up with Ultra Hand, the eye that you're looking for is gonna be right under it. Of course, right in a spot where there's all of the, the gloom, or whatever you wanna call it. Throw this bad boy in the hole, and take it to the post statue. And wham bam, thank you ma'am. We're finally done. Now, once you unlock the last Bargainer statue, you're gonna unlock the Tunic of Memories. we will have all the pieces of the Depth set available and the entire Dark set as well. This is also one of the best places to stock up on Bomb Flowers. And don't forget that any of these items that you can only get one of in the game, especially the Amiibo stuff, can be rebought from these statues as well. Now for the moment everyone's been waiting for. How do we get this amazing scythe? The item we need to look for is the Silver Lizalfos Horn. This is a 34 fuse attack power. And so far, I've only been able to find them in one place. That's not to say they're probably not in more areas, but if you do find one, feel free to leave some in the comments below. The place we're gonna be going to is actually at the very bottom left corner of the map. We got pretty close to it when we got the Bargainer statue that was below the Poplar Foothill Skyview Tower. So if you go through here and then use one of these light routes that you got as a fast travel when getting that bargainer statue we need to head all the way southwest to this spot right here there is a mine here called the abandoned Luralin mine you can get that light route haven't found the other light routes in this area but we're looking for this very corner right here you'll be able to fly into this area i threw out a giant bloom seed here but you can see there are some silver Lizalfos right here. These will respawn every blood moon. And all we need to do is just kill these bad boys. There is a lot of monsters here. So if you get overwhelmed with that, you can use bombs or you can use a uh, free shield. If you so desire, it's actually one of my favorite ways to deal with things because you can just continuously, bl I just got butt stuffed by a goblin. That's always a good time. You can just free shield them all. But the ones that we really want to kill are these silver Lizalfos. Everything else is really easy. It also stands a chance of dropping one of these tails with 31 fuse attack power, but the thing we want is the horn. Now there's a couple different things we can now there's a couple different things we can do with this fuse material. If you put it on a two-handed sword, it's gonna be humongous, but I don't think it's the best use for it. I mean it's it's pretty slow. Although I suppose if you're using the two-handed sword and you're like doing this motion, it's kind of cool to have a sickle for that. If you put it on a sword, it's gonna be a little bit smaller, but nice and quick. I kind of like swords. It does look a little weird attached to a sword though, I'm not gonna lie. Now my preferred use at the moment is on a polearm because it looks freaking amazing and polearms are really fun to use. I do wish you had like a slashing motion rather than like a pokey motion, but I don't know, I really like it. And also if you have it on a Royal Guard Spear, once it's close to breaking, its damage is gonna go all the way up to 98, which is really good. You can use this to take down Lynels by jumping on their back. And when you're on their back, they won't take any damage. Although it's by no means the most powerful version because the white maned or silver Lionel blade is going to be much stronger. 